Hello, everyone. You join me with some uh, some double speed footage here of me descending the shelf, which is uh, a climb that I've got a hill climb video of uh, from a couple of months ago. It's not a great video, but if you think oh, it looks nice, it'd be interesting to see someone climb this. Do go and check that out. The reason I'm starting with a descent is that this isn't going to be a standard cycling video. Um, I just wanted to put some cycling footage in because the actual video uh, <laughs> is a bit of a lifestyle thing. It's it's just uh, the recipe for the flapjack that I make when I am cycling. But I thought I need to put some cycling footage in. I can't believe I got to 60 kilometers an hour on this descent. It's sketchy as hell. I really, um, I must have been going pretty hard there. Uh, it's double time, so you can't really see. The reason I'm stuck over to the right is because there's so much gravel in the middle of the road that I didn't trust the stability of my wheel in it. Um, and you can see kind of potholes there. I've just gone past a pothole that's so big that I think I would have broken my rims if I'd have hit it. It's a lovely little road, though. Oh, my God. Apart from that horrendous cyclocross section there. Um, but I like coming around this kind of hairpin and going relatively fast. I don't know the descent that well, so there's a few corners... I think with this speed up effect, you won't really notice, but there's a few corners that I come in too hot and um, never like dangerous, but it means I can't just take them in a nice sweeping way. It means I enter the corner, I realize I'm going too fast and I have to kind of sit up and break and scrub all that speed before turning around. That was one of them. That was a proper, you know, turning a bit like a 50 pence piece for the for the British viewers, very angular because I was sitting up uh, and trying my best to not come <laughs> off. I've never been a great descender. But anyway, lovely view. It was a beautiful day in the Cluids, so can't complain too much. Nice, fast descent. And just a uh, bit of fun, just out having fun on my bike, which was, was fantastic. Hello, guys. Um unconventional for me to be starting a video from my kitchen with the intention to cook. This is never going to be a cooking channel, but this is maybe my most requested video ever in that one person once has requested that I make this video uh, and no one's ever requested that I make a video before. So Ian, today I am including how I make the flapjack that I take on rides. So we'll flip to my uh, horrible above worktop camera because this isn't a cooking channel my camera's literally mounted on my bike stand above the worktop um flapjack for those who don't know much about it which for example ian said it wasn't something that was really eaten in the netherlands it's literally just three ingredients if you want to make it really simple it is oats fat uh, and sugar it is, it is that simple. And the simplest recipes are just um, two to one to one. So you can always do whatever unit you like. Two oats, one fat, one sugar. Um, the nice thing about that is you can do it at any scale, depending on how much you want at the end. 50 grams of oats, so a 300 gram total mix today. Uh, so the reason I like this on rides is that um, it's got everything you need to keep you going. It's nice, solid food. Um, but unlike, for example, the rice cakes that are really popular these days, it doesn't become mush after two hours. Like those rice cakes, I love for the first hour or two, but then by hour four, you're putting body temperature rice paste that smears everywhere in your face. And I can't, I can't handle it texturally. Whereas these are nice and firm texture. Obviously the sugar is all carbs, like fast release carbs that you need. The fat will keep it in your stomach a little bit longer, so it doesn't just pass straight through your system. That will moderate the release of the carbs. And oats, um, approximately by weight, are half carbohydrates, but there's almost no sugar. They are a slow-releasing carb. Um, and then there's some amount of protein, kind of 10% of it is protein. Um, there's a little bit of fiber and a little bit of fat. I'm not pretending that this is, like, I eat this because it's the perfect nutritional thing on a ride. It's just what I found works for me. Uh, so you'll see how quick they are when I stop waffling. So because it's two to one to one, 150 to 75 sugar. Now this is where I get a bit pretentious because 
rather than buying brown sugar. Brown sugar is just purified sugar that has molasses reintroduced into it um, and it's more expensive. So I will just do some white sugar and a small amount of or black treacle in the UK is what we call um, molasses from sugar cane. Fat, best fat there is, is butter, obviously. But being a bit of a hipster, I found that adding some amount of coconut oil helps a lot. Um, if we want to get into the chemistry of it, coconut oil is a longer chain triglyceride than, than the fat, fats that will be in um, butter. So it sets harder. So for on a ride, having a firmer flapjack means it doesn't fall apart in your pocket. Uh, I still do two to one to one. My fat is now just made up of butter and coconut oil. It's still only total one component. So between the butter and the coconut oil, uh, in this case, I'm doing 75 grams total fat. It will be 50 grams of butter uh, and 25 grams of coconut oil. Otherwise sets a bit too hard. So with those in, there's two other things that I add. Golden syrup, that's for texture and flavour. I don't know if you get that on the continent. Um, it's just tasty. And generally I would add a teaspoon um, per sort of 50 grams of oats, but I just give it a squeeze really, till I think it'll taste nice. Delicious. And the other thing I add is salt. Straight up table salt. We need electrolytes when we're riding and it takes the edge off the sweetness. So I've just got some salt in my hand that will go through. Simple as that, there's my mix. 30 seconds in the microwave. And... So out it comes, it's not perfectly melted, but it will be soft enough. Give it all a good stir around. So then I've pre-lined just a loaf tin, just because I know this is what fits this size for any sort of suitable baking dish. Um, you want something that will make them about a centimetre, or uh, maybe to two centimetres deep, depending on how, <laughs> how thick you want your flat jack, but about a centimetre is fine. Uh, simple as that, stick it in. I didn't used to line them. Some recipes say just butter the tin and it'll come out, but everything was sticking for me. So, so there you go. Uncooked flapjack, ready to go. I've preheated my oven, 200 degrees. Delicious. Um, it'll take about 20 minutes, but we'll keep an eye on it and I'll show you as we get through later. Oven's beeping, that's the 20 minutes up. Um, 20 minutes is a really rough guide, you just gotta play it by ear. In this case, they look pretty good to me. They're very wet still, because that's how they come out. They're starting to brown around the edges. Uh, I'm probably better moving the camera. So yeah, they're starting to brown around the edges. They've clearly browned, caramelized. Um, if you take them much further, they'd be quite acrid, I think. You, you could taste the burn, so. Yeah, I'm happy with them. Uh, can't do anything with them because the fat and the sugar are still molten at the moment and you need it to set. So you just leave them to cool now. So post, post TTT, ready to cut into my flapjack for tomorrow. Um, it's cold and it's sticky now. So you can see the, <laughs> how much it sticks. Um, when it's this shape, I honestly don't, you know, people would weigh it out and think about how many carbs uh, versus everything else is in there. I just do it by how it'll fit in my pocket. And there you go, piece of flapjack. Uh, about 35 grams, I guess it's probably 25 grams of carbs in there and the other, uh, the remaining components be a, a bit of protein from the oats but mostly fat from the butter and the coconut. Um, I normally aim to eat one to two of these pieces an hour, which on top of um, carbs in my bottle keeps me going. So just time to bag up. Being either environmentally conscious or a, a hippie, depending on what you want to say. I've got reusable bags, so I just pop this in for every ride. 
Um, and yeah, I'll carry all of that on my back tomorrow. hope you enjoyed that video or found it somewhat informative. I don't know if you were able to make out what I just said there, but this is the Moyle Arthur descent. So I've just done another nice hill climb. And again, it's quite a fun descent, but I've been known to go too fast. Uh, and some of these bends, they tighten up as you go through them. And as you can see, you can't take a nice wide line. The road's rough. It's relatively busy for this area of Wales because it's got quite a nice sort of walk at the top families will drive up here this is the only access to it so it can be a little bit problematic um i do think it's a nice descent though it's it's a nice road along sort of a river valley to the right through through the woods and although it is a little bit rough terrain and gravelly road and potholed you can normally see what's coming you can normally afford to build up a decent bit of speed um which which is always fun um I do have to kick in a few places. It's not a steady descent. And there's a reason that we go up the other side of this climb because it's a bit... It's a bit crap coming this side, to be honest, over a very bumpy cattle grid. And here... Um, oh, no, I'm, I'm a bit early. I think just around here, there's a point where you can really judge me because I was descending and I'm a bit blasé about this because I've been down a few times now and, and I know... I can go fairly quick and I entered a corner um, this corner here and then I noticed that I was getting a message on my head unit Rihanna had texted me and it was nothing important I should have known it would be nothing important because I just texted her saying where I was up to um, so it was just like a, a normal reply text but I read the whole thing as it scrolled on my head unit whilst also descending at like 50k an hour absolutely stupid i don't know why i did it and to to this moment i'm kicking myself um so there you go bit of life experience just because it's a message on a head unit it's it's almost no different to texting and driving really is it and hopefully that's kick up the bum i needed to to remind myself not to do that again anyway rambling aside this descent's about to come to an end i hope you've enjoyed the video guys thanks for watching